everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the recap of the November 2019 Chemnitz Dialogue livestream. Last month, we were inspired by these beautiful roses, and I was intrigued by that pastel hints of color, especially going back to a whisper, leave no die behind I had done recently. I wanted to see if I could exercise this restraint on my own and do it with intent. So we took mere drops of some 1% stock solutions of uh, Jacquard Chestnut, Dharma Fire Red, and Dharma Avocado to create this blush pink and mint colorway you see here. I dissolved drops of this dye and diluted it further until I got something that when I first applied it to the yarn felt like the barest whisper of color. You could barely see it. And this allowed me to build up the color more and more until we got this pastel here. Believe it or not, this is a buildup of color, not the first wash. A lot of times people have questions about how much water they should dissolve their dye in. And I frequently respond that it doesn't necessarily matter how much water you're using. What matters is the total amount of dye that you're adding for getting your color away. Where that water volume comes into play is with technique. If I had just dropped a 1% stock solution of any of these colors onto the yarn, we would have ended up with a bright dot of color that wouldn't have spread. We wouldn't have gotten that pastel wash. But by dissolving that drop in a lot of water, that gave us more volume to work with so we could spread it out further. So again, like the volumes of water you use are so technique dependent um, and yeah, feel free to ask more questions about that down in the comments. To get the hues I wanted, I mixed up a bunch of extra colors. And we had a fair amount of dye left behind, even with just using drops from these 1% stock solutions. And could I leave any dye behind? Of course not. So now I'm going to go show you what we created with the leftover dye. Here in my pot, I'm warming up for around 8 to 10 cups of water. I'm going to add, and let's start with just one tablespoon of white vinegar. And then here is our leftover, and then here is our leftover color combination. There seems to be a lot of pigment, but if I had actually added a ton of dye here, we wouldn't, it would be more opaque. It wouldn't be as translucent as it is. I pre-soaked a skein of Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I pre-soaked it for, goodness, about, about an hour or so. And dipping in, you can see that we've got a pastel pink here. Um, actually, mixing that remnant, all those pinks and reds and purples and greens together has given us this really, really lovely pink, but it's not quite a whisper. I think we're going to have a beautiful pastel pink colorway. It's going to be pale, but not, not that whisper, which was what I was going for. I think the dark end is going to be a medium pink. Um, but see, towards this end, we're getting into that blush territory as we are soaking up this color and I'm gonna wait like I don't mind if there is some white left behind um, but I am still going slow just for fun um, the if I had added more acid right away here then the colors would strike faster and I wouldn't have been able to get as much of a gradient as we are getting and now there's still eh, basically all the color has absorbed um, but I'm trying to move things around make sure things can spread out around that tip now we're not even quite up to temp yet we're not even like just below a boil or anything I'm gonna add that second tablespoon of vinegar now and I'm gonna let things heat for 20 minutes on, I'll reduce the heat once we start seeing some bubbles, but I'm going to heat it for 20 minutes and then we'll come remove it. Okay, 
So in this time, I think we did add some color to that palest section. Uh, maybe we have a tad bit of white left. But you can see, this is a pale pink, but it's not barely their pink. But I think this still looks beautiful next to the inspiration photo. And I can't wait to compare this to the yarn I did in the live stream, because I feel like there's more pigment in here. And so, it's not always often that, with liquid dyes at least, there's more pigment in what's left behind than what I started out with. I'm going to go wash everything off camera and we'll show you what we ended up with. This bonus skein of yarn really washes out the two that we created with intent. And honestly, this sort of medium pink all the way to that white feels, if you look at the photo, you can feel that yarn in there. It works. It fits. But you can just see how much more restraint there was to create those pastels when we have something to compare it to. Similarly, if I bring in a bare skein of Stroll fingering weight yarn, suddenly you see that pigment pop so much more. These skeins are pastel and they are subtle and they are breaths of color, but that pigment really is there. Could I have shown even more restraint? Probably. Um, but if I wanted to, say, get more even coverage of those pastels on the yarn, then it would probably make sense to dissolve the drops in, say, 24 cups of water, and then dip half the skein in. So you could get um, a bit more evenness of that application. But I love this modeled nature of the pastels that we got. The end of the year can get so hectic for me with packing up the Hanukkah samplers and editing all the videos for that series. And I'm so inspired by this photo, and I regret not going at this in a few different ways. I would have loved to take these pastel colorways and then speckle on sort of a yellow-green to give that feeling of the leaves and the thorns of the flowers. I think that that would be absolutely stunning. And I do have that regret. I would have loved to have gone and added some speckles to this base. But that's something I'm going to have to revisit. And yeah, I have a feeling that dyeing bases and over dyeing them with speckles is something I'm going to be playing around with a lot in 2020. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of these recaps where I'm going to showcase some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by this same inspiration photo. It is so much fun to not only hear how you would dye the yarn with the photo during the live streams in the comment section, but then for you to share these photos with all of us and let me feature them in the video. Different people will look at the same photo in so many different ways, and you might draw things from the photo as a whole, or just be inspired by, say, a rose petal within that photo, or maybe even the backdrop. It's a lot of fun. If you want to participate in upcoming or even past Chemnitz Dye Along live streams, you can share the photos with me by using the Chemnitz Dye Along hashtag on Instagram or by replying to the photograph on the Chemnitz Facebook page with pictures of your yarn and I'll pick some to feature in these recaps. What kind of colorway would you like to create from this photo? What techniques sort of draw you in with these rose petals and the softness that you see here? Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. The next Cabinets Dialogue live stream will happen sometime around the 15th of the month. That's usually when these end up taking place. At least that's when I try to release the photo. So make sure you're following me on Instagram and Facebook so you don't miss what next month's theme is going to be. And honestly, at the time I'm filming this recap, I don't even know what it's going to be yet. I do try to mix up tones and feelings and I don't know, I have a lot of photos to pull from and I'm really excited to play around more with color. Since this is the last recap that will share in 2019, I want to thank all of you for encouraging me to challenge myself as a dyer and an artist. This dialogue series was started by all of your requests and really it challenges me to 
look at a specific color inspiration and then try to translate that onto yarn. And in some of these months, I've really gone outside of my personal comfort zone and it's really exciting. And some of these colorways that were unexpected are my favorites, absolutely. If you love the content that I create and want to support the channel on another level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, you can find links in the video description and iCard. Patrons get early access to a new video every month, the Dye Pot PS series, and the content of that video is something that I create based on your votes and your suggestions. And the content of that series is based on suggestions and votes by all of the patrons, and it's really so much fun to create these videos. For a complete list of perks, um, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon page. Finally! Don't forget that Hanukkah is almost on us. December 22nd, mark your calendars, that's the first night of Hanukkah, and at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the videos are going to start. And let me say, we've got a video for each night of Hanukkah, plus two bonuses, plus the normal Dye Pot Weekly schedule. There's a lot more content left for 2019, so hold on, it's going to be a colorful ride. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, everyone.